new at 6.30 tonight. We are talking to more local candidates with less than three weeks to go before the elections. James Musgraves is the Republican candidate for the 50th Missouri House District. And you might remember it was redrawn to include part of South Columbia, but cut out Ashland and much of Southern Boone County, where the current representative Sarah Walsh is from. James Musgraves joins me in studio. James, we appreciate having you here today. Well, let's start off by having you tell viewers just a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, I'm born and raised a Missourian. I grew up in North County, St. Louis, uh, or North St. Louis County. Um, joined the Navy right out of high school, uh, enlisted right out of high school, went out to California, that's where I met my wife, and uh, applied for an ROTC scholarship, got it, and came back home to Missouri, went to University of Missouri, got my bachelor's degree, where I, I was also commissioned as an officer in the Navy, got selected for flight training, Went down to Pensacola, flew helicopters for 20, 24 years, and I retired March of 2019. Still married to the same perfect woman uh, for a little over 34 years. I have two sons. One's 34, or 33, he's in the Navy, and I have a 30-year-old that's uh, managing a large retail store here in Columbia. And a brand new granddaughter who's just a hair over two months old now. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Congrats on that. Well, I want to ask you too, how the new shape of the 50th district, how do you mm. think it's going to affect this race? Well, I think it's it definitely was redrawn and it favors the Democrats. Uh, I do, however, think th that that's generic polling. It's uh, in my opinion. I do think the environment that we're in uh, historically, historic inflation, historic costs of living, historic gas prices, that changes the landscape politically a little bit for everybody, regardless of what party uh, you may or may not affiliate with. Uh, so I think it's going to be a challenging election for sure. Um, knocking on doors and talking to people is what it's going to take. Um, signs, as you and I were talking about earlier, and getting the, getting the word out what you want to do and, and uh, where you want to go, if, how you can help the people of District 50 down in Jeff City. How can you prioritize infrastructure and cut taxes? That's a great question. And the example that I, w I like to use is I, I, I look at the, uh, the high-speed rail to nowhere in California. Okay, it's been going on for a really long time. We have spent billions of federal tax dollars, that's your and your I's tax dollars. Why can the, gov the federal government not give us some of our revenue back to take care of I-70, for example? Uh, there's, I think it's, and I, I might get the numbers a little bit mixed up, there's 40% of the Missouri's population it lives within 30 miles I-70. Um, 45 or 50% of the businesses in the state of Missouri are within 30 miles of I-70. I-70 is like the carotid artery for uh, the supply system nationally, not just for the state of Missouri, but that's just one example. Um, and that it's called budgeting for a reason, right? I mean, it's not, it's, we, we have a, a mandatory uh, balanced budget here in Missouri. Well, we budget, the federal government does not budget. They have spending plans. They don't have budgets. We budget, so that's what we'll have to do mm -hmm. to prioritize uh, infrastructure. Well, your website says, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna quote you here, our children should be taught how to think, not mm -hmm what to think. Agreed. Explain to me what you mean by that. I think we need to get back to uh, the basics of education, reading, writing, and math, science, things of that nature. I think we've been distracted with a lot of uh, woke ideologies and uh, woke agendas infiltrating our public schools. That's that's not helping us in the future. I think, we, you know, I, I, I gave an example when I was talking to some folks the other day. I, I named off all my elementary school teachers. And I can do it for you too, but we only got five minutes, right? <laughs> but the reason, I don't, it's not that I have some magical way to memorize teachers' names. It's that they had a very positive and profound impact on my life. But I'll tell you, I couldn't tell you if they were married or single. I didn't know what their political persuasion was. I didn't know who they voted for back in the 70s and 80s. They were there to teach teach me how to read, write, the capital cities of all the states, how to learn how to write in cursive, back to the basics of education. That's how to think, not what to think. That's where we need to go. Well, do you support more state spending for Missouri schools? I, right now, the budget for, uh, I just read this, about $7.47 .7 billion is what the state spends on education. The formula that they use, and you'll hear a lot of people talk about that, is dated. It was, it, it, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, it originated in 2005. We need to revisit that formula. I'm not saying we need to, we, we may need to add some spending. We may need to shift spending from, you know, one area to another, but it, we need to revisit that formula that they use to disperse the seven and a half billion dollars. Uh, and then once we do that and we figure out where the money should go, where it should be, where it's needed most, considering all 
types of students throughout, then we can revisit whether or not we need to increase spending. I, I, uh, I think education, our children are the, are the future of our great republic, and, and uh, you're not going to hear me say no to spending for teaching them how to think, not what to think. Sure. We have about 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, earlier you talked a lot about your military experience. Yeah. How do you think that could help you in the legislature? Well, I, th I think you, throughout the court, I went from an E1 and retired as a full commander. So I've been on both sides of the fence. And, I, and, and during the course of that, you learn a lot about leadership and management. I had the experience of building small teams, large teams, and successfully employing them to accomplish a number of tasks. My last tour, I was uh, overseas. I was the executive officer of a base. I had over a $100 million budget and 2,500 people. I think the leadership and management skills, the experience, the life experience will help me get down to Jeff City, lead, manage, understand, not be, not be tentative about talking to other people and trying to trying to accomplish tasks for the people of District 50. Well, James Musgraves, we certainly appreciate your time. So thank you so much for coming. Thank in you so today. much. I appreciate it. And if you want to watch this interview from this week, or if you want to watch his opponent Douglas Mann's interview, both of those are up on our website, abc17news.com.